Welcome to Outside Sales Talk, where we meet with industry experts to learn the strategies and tactics that make them successful. I'm your host, Steve Benson, and I've helped thousands of salespeople all over the world crush their quota. Today, I'll help you crush yours. Welcome back to Outside Sales Talk. Today, we have Eleanor Stutz with us, and we're talking about powerful personal branding that boosts sales. Uh, Eleanor, by way of introduction, is a best-selling author, motivational speaker, and sales blogger. Her, her book, Nice Girls Do Get the Sale, Relationship Building That Gets Results, is an international bestseller featured in Time Magazine and on CBS News. Uh, Hired, another book that, that she wrote, actually came out of her experiences with her community service, helping people get jobs, that she started doing after nearly dying from breaking her neck. Uh, The book Hired uh, helps people learn to get the job they want. So uh, Eleanor is a super interesting person. I'm really excited to have you on on the show, Eleanor. Thank you. It's a privilege to be your guest, Steve. So so tell me, you broke into the male-dominated industry of sales after being a stay-at-home mom for 15 years. How did your experiences there as a stay-at-home mom, shape who you are as a salesperson? It was an eye-opening experience. I wasn't wanted. They assumed I would fail. I don't fail at anything. I just keep pushing myself to make it happen. And then everything broke loose. The stories are incredible, but it taught me a lot. And what do you think that uh, being a a stay-at-home mom taught you that translated so well into sales? That everybody has varying viewpoints, especially when children become teenagers. And you have to listen very carefully to what's being told to you and then respond carefully. And that's the whole key to successful selling. And in... In some of your blogs, you you talk about developing your personal story as a salesperson. Can you tell our listeners why this is so important? Yes. Initially, when I was attempting to sell without any training, it was all business-like, not personal at all. And so the conversations were very brief. It didn't feel as if I was getting anywhere. And then one day... The idea was given to me to take a public speaking class, and I knew I needed to because I was a nervous wreck, especially when I had to meet with executives. So the first night, I was afraid to announce my name to give you an idea of where I was at, and by the end of the class, three months later, I was the grand prize winner. And what I learned throughout that is you have to be personally professional, and that's how people begin buying into what you have to say and listening more carefully to what you have to say. But the first step, I learned that it was re-emphasized in the speaking class is to listen, to hear all the nuances of what people are telling you, ask questions, and then slowly but surely you can connect your own personal experiences what they're telling you. And when you make that personal connection, that's when opportunities begin to unfold and blossom. Okay, that makes a ton of sense. So when you say when you say telling your personal story, you don't mean just speaking for three minutes about your background and your life's experiences. You mean having a conversation with a prospect or a customer and weaving in things that that make you who you are and stories that make you who you are into the conversation. Correct. It's connecting the dots. So you might begin with, well, what I did, because I couldn't stand that first job I was on, I used to ask them how they chose their career and if they, how they chose the company, if they liked their job, and all of a sudden it became a personal conversation. And then it gave me insights on what to look for in my next job, too. It was, um, you know, motivated from a personal side. But we began enjoying the conversation. That's the differentiator. Are you enjoying your conversations with your clients or you're just going through the routine steps? Makes a difference. 
And how do you think someone can, a salesperson can enjoy their conversations with their customers more? Because I totally agree with you. If you genuinely enjoy the company of your prospects or customers, you're going to connect better. You're going to resonate with them more. They're going to like you more. Um, how, how, how do you advise doing that? Okay. Well, there are a few ways. Uh, first of all, if you're walking into a big company and look for pictures or mottos in the form of artwork on the walls, when you get into somebody's office, look for signs of hobby, family, pets, begin the conversation on one of those notes. For example, I walked into a cold basement of somebody's office and he bought for the entire city. And um, there was nothing nice to say, except I spotted a picture of a horse and out of the blue, I said, what's the name of your horse? And next thing I know, he started talking for an hour. <laughs> and by the end of the meeting, he said, you're really nice. And I've never talked so in depth to anybody before. I'm mm -hmm. going to give you the contract for the whole city. I was shocked to tell you the truth. But that's a, you know, an unusual example. But when you get people talking about their hobbies or family first, then the con business conversation begins to unfold on a more personable level. Yeah, that, that makes a ton of sense. Um, and, and when you're, when you're weaving in your personal stories, um, how do you how do you choose which ones to weave in? How do you develop interesting or meaningful personal stories that you that you talk to customers and prospects about? Uh, well, as I say, their perspective always comes first. And when I hear the other person say something that reminds me of an event, uh, when they're done finishing their sentence or paragraph. I will share with them my experience related to what they just told me and then bring the conversation back to where it was left off. And usually there'll be a follow-up. They'll say, wow, that was really interesting. I enjoyed hearing that. And then we'll move the conversation forward on the business note. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's, I think that's really key to what you just said there, that, that you circle it back to the, to the conversation where you left off. So you're always advancing the conversation in the, in the direction that you're, that you've planned. Absolutely. And then what happened after a long while, well, after the first few months, um, well, I'll tell you the funny story. I, I may have mentioned that I wasn't permitted training because I was expected to fail. And um, I never accept failure. I just keep going, keep learning. So I kept going into these different appointments, not knowing anything about what I was selling or how I was supposed to sell. And so I just kept having these friendly conversations. And then one by one, each person I met with said, gosh, you're so different from everyone else. You're a And that became my personal brand. And by the third month, they said, if you just bring a brochure in, we'll buy something. <laughs> Wait, what? Sorry, I didn't you, know you to broke... bring in a brochure. <laughs> you, you broke up for, there for one second. You said, uh, they, they said, you're a what? A breath of fresh air. A breath of fresh air. Okay. Because I didn't know how to sell or anything about what <laughs> I was selling. So I was in there for the friendly conversations. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's, it's interesting. This resonates with me. Um, with feedback that I've gotten from people. And I'm thinking about having buyers on the show and, and maybe a buyer and a seller who have done a deal on the show, like a major deal and have them kind of talk about the whole experience, kind of do a, a post-mortem or a, uh, or a, you know, go, go, go over it in depth and talk about how they feel felt about different things. And what, and just to hear it from two perspectives, I think it's important for, for, for salespeople to hear that. Um, Tell me, you, you talk about personal brands uh, in your books a bit. You, tell me a little bit about what a personal brand is in sales and, and, and how can salespeople use it to improve their craft? It's how people uh, view you. And I didn't know about this till after my sales career and I became an entrepreneur. And I was asked to write the words personal brand in each piece that I contributed to a site. And then all of a sudden I got it. It's how people view you and that continual uh, anointing of being a 
breath of fresh air came my way. And I realized it's because I didn't follow any script. I was just me. I didn't have a script because I wasn't permitted training. And I did what I felt was right. And I always treated people with respect. And I never tried to ram a sail down their throat. I wanted to be certain the fit was right. Otherwise, I would walk away and say, well, if there's a better time, then we'll reconvene. And they really appreciated that. So it's how you approach the conversation, how you deliver your service, and if you follow up to see what the feedback is and how you might improve. It's all of your behaviors combined in a little phrase. That's your personal brand. All of your behaviors combined in a in a little phrase, and 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 your brand was genuine, and I think that should probably be in almost everyone's brand. It's it's hard to be something you're not or someone you're not. Uh, fit, respect, timely follow up. That's that's fantastic. Um, what what are some of the most interesting stories that you've heard people present in sales, and how did the how did these stories translate to an effective sales persona or affect the person's personal brand? Well, I'll tell you. Um, <laughs> my husband was uh, working with salespeople. He was more on the IT side, and he invited this fellow over for dinner one night before I went into sales. And I thought the guy could be a stand-up comedian. He, told, he shared a story. Uh, you're in San Francisco. You're familiar with Knob Hill. It's one of the steepest hills in the area. Absolutely. I lived, uh, I lived right by there for years. Yeah. So he was describing uh, going to an event, and a bunch of them were on a cable car that got off at the top of the hill. And there was one woman decked you know, the whole way in a long evening gown, very straight, but she tripped getting off the cable car. Now, mind you, this story was told to me well over 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. So she fell off the cable car and her gown was so tight, she ruled, according to him, all the ways down Knob Hill. <laughs> well, I can tell you, it just had me in stitches the way he told the story. I've remembered it all these years. I thought, how can anybody make up a story like that? But he was a very successful salesman. And when I entered sales and I started experiencing some of the clowns in sales and some of the better people in sales and my sharing my stories, I realized that's the key to successful selling. When you can enjoy the conversation, tell a story that other people buy into, perhaps make them laugh, that really influences people to work with you. Absolutely. Um, and, and I think humor can be a very powerful tool, both to establish rapport and have a prospect or customer like you more. Um, I, I encourage salespeople that I coach to have, de de develop a few jokes that are, that are appropriate and, and, uh, or inappropriate depending on the, on the industry, but that are appropriate to their, their interactions with their customers. It can be, they can be self-deprecating and you can reuse them over and over again. If you, even if you just have three of them, often you find yourself in similar conversations with customers and you can keep using uh, the same jokes. Um, it's, uh, there, there's actually, uh, there are some, there's some people that actually will work with you to help you develop some jokes and become funnier uh, specifically for sales. Uh, I may, I may actually have one of those guys on the show. Um, I met one, uh, relatively recently that was, that was pretty, pretty funny, but, uh, it, it, it's a skill to be funny and it's, but if you can, if you take the time to think through a, a handful of jokes, then you just, and it, you just have them in your quiver and it can keep, you can keep bringing them up. It can be a powerful tool. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, you know, the sales industry is, a crowded arena full of bold personalities. How can you use your own story to s stick out from flashier and, and more dramatic characters? Well, <laughs> I used a technique. You asked how did being a mom help me mm -hmm. in sales? 
Well, in the old days, I don't know if people still do it, we had territories and we had to knock on doors and I was trying to get into larger corporations. Mm -hmm. And it, some were very, very difficult. So you know what I did? There were three ways I used food. Everybody loves to eat, nobody turns it down. Mm -hmm. So number one, the big companies, I would bring everybody candy bars on holidays, Halloween, you name it. And they loved it. The guard, the receptionist, everybody in between would walk me down to meet the executive. Mm -hmm. um, one Fortune 500, the it, VPs could not make a decision what to have for lunch. So I went to the guy in the basement, invited him to an event that we were having, a big showroom at a hotel, had a chauffeur pick him up, treated him to lunch. He said he felt like the King of England. He'd never been treated that way before. And he encouraged the VPs and senior executives to buy from me. Um, people in the warehouse on the bad side of town, they uh, encouraged the purchasing manager to talk to me. She didn't want to have anything to do with me because I never sold for the biggest and the best representative in the market. Mm -hmm. I always sold for a medium-sized supplier. So she was afraid to entertain me. However, I treated them so well that they encouraged her to speak with me. And, you know, there are no totem poles in sales in any field. Everybody has decision-making capability. So in the end, be respectful, be kind, and be thoughtful of everybody. And if somebody tells you they don't have time to meet with you, just say, how about if I pick up some coffee and a treat to go with it? And that way, you don't have to take coffee to break, and I'll save you time. I'll come directly to your office with the coffee. Nobody turns that down. Who doesn't like coffee? Exactly. <laughs> well, I, it, and I think I think what you're saying is super important. I mean, you know, we we often think that it's the C-suite that makes all the decisions, but you know, I, I can tell you as the CEO of a company, you know, I I make a lot of decisions, but you, it's almost always coached by the people on the team, especially if it's if it's in if, if it's close to one of their areas or in their areas, they're effectively making the, the decision, and I'm just you know I'm rubber stamping it, and. And so being able to influence the different people in the organization from, from the guy in the basement, you might mention that you picked up in a, in a limo or whatever to, uh, to the guys in the warehouse, they all can have tremendous influence and they know the map of the, of the organization. They know who to talk to, who to influence. And, uh, and that's a great way to, to build trust, right? You, you, uh, you, if you have, if some, if someone that they already know, someone that the executive or the actual decision already knows and trusts is the person kind of whispering in their ear, then, you know, by, by the, the transitive property of trust, I guess I'd call it, you, you also, you are also trusted as the salesperson. And, and you've said trust is the soul of sales in, in your books. Can you, can you tell us what you mean by that? Trust is the soul of sales. Yes. Um, people, originally, when I was finally given training, I was told people have to know you, like you, and trust you. And the way you develop trust is by following up promptly when they give you a date and time to do so. You remind them they told you to. Uh, you follow up on requests that, you know, that some are annoying. You need extra paperwork and you send it on time. You're prompt with everything. You show, you show up when you're supposed to. You're punctual. And these are all small steps that lead to the building of trust and the conversations and the way you come across. And you're genuine. You're not following a scripts. In my opinion, scripts don't work. Throw them out because no two people are genetically the same. So how can you follow a script for everybody in your territory? Doesn't make sense to me. Everybody's a unique human being. And when you speak to that uniqueness, that's when the trust will build and people will be more likely to buy from you. Absolutely. Um, you, a big part of your sales strategy is sincerity and Sincerity can't really be faked. It's hard to pretend to be genuine. Do you have any tips on 
how a sales rep can be sincere without coming off as disingenuous? Oh, well, it begins with the, the listening. And here's a great example. Somebody was on an interview and the interviewing party said to the applicant, are you familiar with the latest software system? And say he called it geographic targeting. I'm just making that up. Mm -hmm. And the guy said, oh, yes, I know it's brand new, but I'm proud to say we got training on it last week. And I'm certified on it. I was the star performer in the training class. So the person doing the interviewing said, I'm sorry, I just made that up. <laughs> <laughs> it was a test. Uh, please excuse yourself at the front desk. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and that was the end. So you have to be honest. Yeah. It doesn't right. matter what you do, and people are going to test you. Mm -hmm. Well, and I've found that that often the person you're selling to knows a, a tremendous amount, in particular about their business, and a tr often a tremendous amount more than than you know. And it's really hard to to fake it till you make it. Sometimes in sales, you actually have to develop expertise and. Your Absolutely. customers' businesses and in in how the how the, the customers' industry works and that sort of thing. It has to be real. You do, and I just realized the person who told the story about Knob Hill and who made up that story about the software was the mm -hmm. same person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. now, they sound like a pretty interesting gentleman, I'll tell you. Yeah. Uh, you discuss in your book Hired uh, using sales techniques to sell yourself during job interviews and how, how to do that. How, tell me, how can interviewees use their personal brand during sales job interviews and how can they use sales techniques to land a new job? Okay, well, on job interviews, the questions get more and more bizarre as time goes on. So there was one question, I literally stopped answering the personality test this was on a personality test. It was, do you want to be a, would you rather be an ice cream truck driver or a kamikaze pilot? Well, I obviously don't want to kill myself. <laughs> That's a on the question. other hand, <laughs> I started thinking about sales and you almost feel like you're taking these incredible chances trying to get into the larger corporations. So I answered kamikaze pilot. And uh, <laughs> I was hired within 24 hours. And the sales manager's first words out of his mouth said, I don't know whether to be thrilled to pieces you're on my team or scared to death of you. Probably so, a little bit of both from what yeah, I'm hearing here. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> so but getting back to uh, the in-person interview, mm -hmm. um, they'll throw crazy questions at you. I remember that being asked what type of animal would you rather be in the jungle? So again, you have to think about the sales position. And managers always complain about salespeople going after the low hanging fruit. So I said, I'd like to be a giraffe because they're very tall. They don't go for the low hanging fruit. They go for the apples at the top of the tree. And when they run, they're very elegant. All eyes are on them. That's who I would be. So you kind of relate it back. And it also helps you stand out from the uh, trite answers everybody else gives. You have to think about the questions they're asking you and how the, your answer will relate to the sales position. Well, I'd like to do the next section that I call sales in 60 seconds. So okay. this is where I ask you uh, questions that have relatively quick answers, hopefully under 60 seconds. Um, so what's your single greatest sales secret? It's uh, using humor and not selling. It's listening. I say question, listen, clarify. Question, listen, clarify. Okay. Um, what's the biggest setback you had in your sales career and what did you learn from it? 
The biggest setback was I was an embarrassment to the men. So my thank you for bringing Fortune 500 and 100 companies into the company the first time was to have my accounts given to the men and my quota tripled. So I had to interview year after year for new jobs, but I became an expert on how to get hired. There you go. What what year are you talking about? When did all the when did these story that's when did that story happen? Nineteen ninety three. Okay. Um, it's amazing how far amazing how far the world's world's come here in just uh, what is it thirty five years or so. Well, maybe not that far because equal pay is still a problem. It is. Yeah, we, we're not we're not done, but uh, but it is a. It, it's getting. Yeah, it's moved forward, but maybe not, maybe not all the way. Um, so tell me, what, what's a mistake people commonly make when trying to build their personal brand? They're trying to copy other people. And just as no two clients are alike, no two salespeople are alike, you've got to be yourself. <laughs> just saying, yeah. no, everybody else is taken, be yourself. Yeah, be, being genuine seems like it's a real theme here. Um, Tell me, uh, what, what's your advice for women in today's sales industry? To believe in themselves and to know uh, they can do it their way. Think back to their success, previous successes, mm -hmm. and apply that to what they're doing today. And always keep learning and take occasional calculated risk. Do you have a, uh, a favorite sales tool or an app that, that you use that you find to be very helpful to you in sales? Well, for me as an entrepreneur, I use Twitter and I really like that. What do you like about it? Uh, uh, it brought me a very broad audience. I have a little touch of ADD and so I, I can quickly read information mm -hmm. and I can provide uh, my tips and then occasionally I might tweet out about a tip from my book and include the picture so if you have a service or a product to sell you mm -hmm. can do the same I think it's a wonderful sales tool underneath it as long as you get most of the time giving out excellent information you're going to connect with a larger audience yeah it certainly is a huge audience we we uh my marketing team does a lot of tweeting on my behalf. I, I, I'm, I'm, and it, a lot of it is giving, you know, kind of pointing to people to resources that we've found that are especially helpful. Um, as an actionable takeaway, what should the field salespeople listening today do as a first step to get started on their own personal brand? Uh, they should take stock of what they enjoyed most through their childhood as a teen and as a young adult and how that perhaps got them into sales. For example, I never fit into the town where I grew up. And as a young teenage, well, middle-aged teenager, I began traveling. And uh, I didn't care for school either. And I wanted to get out of college in four years. So I studied anthropology. And I took Quechua language of the Incas. Why? Don't ask me, but I did. <laughs> and then a few years, a number of years later, I was at the SBA on a sales call. The lady said she was from Peru. And I said, my tata drinkai kukulian. She almost fell off her chair. And she began giving me all kinds of referrals. So everything you do today connects you to your future. So look back to see what you enjoyed, what you didn't enjoy, and all the steps you took to get to where you are today and multiply the best of what you enjoy, it's called leverage, I learned, into your tomorrow. All right, well, I am going to attempt to summarize everything that you've said here um, for all of our listeners that are driving their cars. So, first of all, uh, being a stay-at-home mom taught you how to be a good listener in sales situations and treat every prospect with respect and care. Salespeople need to learn to be personally professional 
listen and hear all the nuances of what people are asking them and ask a lot of questions. Craft a conversation with your prospect, adding in your personal story and weaving it as, in as you go so that you really in, genuinely enjoy the conversation. Tip there, when you go into a person's office, look for pictures or other signs of their interests and hobbies that can help get the, the conversation started. Could just be a picture of a horse on the wall. Eleanor tells us that she became a breath of fresh air because she was always selling in a different way than the rest of her colleagues because she wasn't following a script. She was letting, letting her genuine self shine through. A personal brand is how people view you. It's about respect, it's about timely follow-up, it's about all your behaviors combined into one descriptive phrase. To get into the big companies, Eleanor says that salespeople need to be kind and respectful to everyone, and it can help to bring, bring a coffee and, uh, and, and get yourself into the door to talk about your product through, uh, through things like coffee and food and, and being nice to, to everyone in the organization, even people that maybe other sales reps aren't targeting to sell to. Build trust with your prospects by being on time and meeting deadlines. Be respectful of your clients and never follow a script. Speak directly to their uniqueness. No matter what, be honest with your prospects and your customers and that honesty will build trust. In interviews, really think about the position you're applying for and always relate your answers back to the position. That was some fantastic advice, and I really appreciate it. Tell me, where can our listeners read more about your work and reach out to you? My website is smoothsale, S-M-O-O-T-H-S-A-L-E dot net. That's net. And uh, my sales blog is right on there. If they'd like to learn more tips, it's posted Tuesday and Friday. My phone number is 408. 209-0550, and they may email me, Eleanor, E-L-I-N-O-R, at smoothsale.net. Excellent. Well, today's been another great episode of the Outside Sales Talk. If you can think of any other sales reps that would benefit from Eleanor's wise words, wise words and, and, and learning these skills, uh, definitely share the love and forward this episode to them. Uh, always please leave a rating on of the podcast on iTunes. Uh, if you find these episodes helpful, that really helps spread the word to other field salespeople. Thanks, Eleanor, for coming on the show. And take care until next time, everybody.